Europe's borders under threat. Refugees from North Africa flood into Italy, sparking a chain reaction of immigration crackdowns in other countries, raising questions about Europe's free flow internal borders under the Schengen Treaty. Hello and welcome, I'm Gemma Slaymaker and this is People First, the programme that answers questions from people all over Europe, just like you. Joining us today is Simon Busatil, an EPP Group member of the European Parliament, who is one of the key players on the Home Affairs Committee in the European Parliament. Welcome to the show, Mr Busatil. Thank you for inviting me. Let's begin with a look at the Schengen Treaty itself before we get to some questions. It began with just five EU member states, Benelux, France and Germany, agreeing in 1985 in the Luxembourg border town of Schengen to drop regular border checks. It was a major step in speeding the free flow of goods, services and people, aimed at unleashing the full potential of Europe's single market. Today, the Schengen area comprises 25 European countries, including three non-EU members, covering a population of 400 million people. But Schengen is still a work in progress and lately open to intense debate. Britain and Ireland have opted to keep full control of their borders. Romania and Bulgaria have been held up due to migration concerns. Divided Cyprus also has yet to join. And now, waves of boat people from upheavals in the Arab world have been testing Schengen's resilience. France blocked trains from Italy filled with Tunisian immigrants who overwhelmed the Italian island of Lampedusa. Italian officials mused about quitting the EU over the dispute. Danish officials insisted on reinstituting border checks to the outcry of the EU and other member states, though there were wider calls to adapt Schengen to an evolving Europe, including a joint call by France and Italy to allow countries to temporarily reimpose border controls. How durable is the treaty? Could it crack under the enormous political pressures? How can the treaty adapt without losing its reason to be? How must Europe adapt its immigration policy? Questions many Europeans are asking. Because of course it is an issue that has topped the headlines recently and is really driving some public opinion polls. Here are a few questions from some people we asked. Hello, my name is Georgia, I'm from Italy and I would like to know how much Schengen is in danger. Hi, I am Giovanni, I come from Milan and I'd like to know how can European Union do better to control its borders. Hi, I'm Rita, I'm from Italy and I want to know how we can integrate immigrants. So many questions for you there, because your country, Malta, is also on the front line of the refugee crisis. So what do you think? Perhaps you can make a brief reference to each of the questions. Yes, um, Schengen is a good thing. For the person who asked whether it's in danger, I think that if we do not take it for granted, if we treasure our free movement, then the politicians will never put it in danger. We are here to defend free movement, and I hope, with the support of this listener, that we will do just that. As to the external borders, we must appreciate that the external borders of Italy or of Malta are also the external borders of the Netherlands. This is something that not everyone appreciates yet and we must do more to appreciate. It also implies that the responsibility for the external borders must also be shared. The responsibility for them should not just lie with the southern member states but with all of them. As for integration, we all know that immigration is required in Europe because of demographic reasons, if not for anything else. But for the arrival of immigrants to be successful, we need good integration policies. And that also includes obligations and not just rights for the migrants, mind you, such as the obligation to learn the language of the country where you arrive. So the dream of a Europe without borders is not over, but perhaps it needs to be reworked, revisited, especially in light of the recent refugee crisis. Um, do we see, for example, reintroducing temporarily internal borders? Internal borders can only be reintroduced in exceptional cases where there are very serious cases where public order really requires them to be reintroduced. But the rule remains free movement and we should not turn the exception 
into the rule. You mentioned the southern countries there. There was a lot of controversy, for example, between France and Italy when there was this huge refugee crisis. How do you see um, the leaders there finding a way out of this situation when they're facing populist pressure? Populist pressure from far-right parties does have a significant political impact. We need to explain to the people that we have policies which are realistic. They might not always give you exactly the answer that you wanted to hear from us, but they are realistic. Whereas the answers that are being given by far-right parties are not at all realistic and they put in danger the rights that you treasure and that you may be taking for granted, like free movement. We should also mention that it was not an easy decision for Parliament to back Schengen membership for Romania and Bulgaria. Here's our report on that. MEPs on the Civil Liberties, Justice and Home Affairs Committee have voted in favour of Romania and Bulgaria joining the Schengen area. But this development comes at a time when the Schengen area is facing a crisis. So is this the right time to be expanding the Schengen zone? We put that question to Simon Busatil, a Maltese MEP who's our group's coordinator on justice and home affairs. If you want to join the Schengen zone, you need to fill clear criteria. If you respect them, then we need to say yes. And this is exactly what we did with Bulgaria and Romania. They have been going through a very difficult and long process in order to satisfy all the conditions that we laid out for them. The European Commission says it's going to propose uh, new uh, measures in response to France and Italy's concerns in order to strengthen the Schengen area. But would reintroducing border controls be a step too far? If certain individual member states have difficulties at their uh, external borders or at their internal borders between one member state and the other, we are willing to discuss that. But the re-erection of national borders within Schengen must only be exceptional in nature. Parliament's rapporteur on this dossier is EPP member Carlos Coelho from Portugal. For Mr Coelho, Schengen represents a big advantage for the EU and one we should build on. We need more police cooperation between the member states and we, mean we need more solidarity between the member states. If we achieve that, we can say in a positive way, Schengen still today to be an asset to the European citizens. An asset so many took for granted until now. Let's take a few more Vox Pop questions on the issue. Ja, hallo, ich komme aus Deutschland. Ich habe Besuch von äh, Spanien dabei. Den möchte ich gerne das Europaparlament zeigen. Und ich habe eine Frage an die Politiker. Das Schengener Abkommen, äh, ist das für die, für die Kriminalität, ist das äh, einfacher für die Kriminalität? Kommen die dadurch besser, besser zu uns oder in die Länder rein, als wie, wenn wir das Schengener Abkommen nicht hätten? Mein Name ist Iris Krämer, ich komme aus Deutschland, aus äh, Siegen und habe eine Frage bezüglich Schengen. Welchen Vorteil hat dieses Schengener Abkommen für uns als Europäer und für, auch für die Welt? So questions really on the light and dark side there, but tell me, is Schengen really an open door for criminals? No, it is not. You do not stop the single criminal by stopping everyone. We should have Schengen, but at the same time and in parallel with that, we should have better intelligence cooperation to fight organized crime in Europe. Is Schengen, in your opinion, distorting the labor markets? For example, it's maybe encouraging cheap labor to flood into some countries. Well, I would say that having open borders actually helps the proper distribution of uh, the labour market in the sense that people are free to go where they can find jobs. Of course, with migration it's different because we're talking about people who come from outside the European Union and that implies that they do not have the right to seek work but they would wait to be, need to wait to be given a permit to work. So far, it's up to each individual country to decide how many it wants to accept. And I think that is fair when it comes to third country nationals. National competences. Turning this on the other side now, how do we persuade people not to migrate in the first place? Because if you talk to people, sometimes they don't really want to move if the conditions are right. Let's take a question on that. Is que vous avez mis en place une politique qui ferait que les gens puissent rester chez eux et y travailler et y vivre décemment? Que de venir rechercher le bonheur chez vous. Because we do have a policy, but clearly it's not enough, right? 
For the past 50 years, Europe has been the largest donor of financial aid to these countries. As you said, it's not enough. We're already doing a lot. We need to do more. But ultimately, proper governance is something that rests in their hands. So just to wrap up, we can say that ultimately Schengen is a good thing and I think there are many people preparing to go on their holidays who will agree with us, but there are a few things that need to be ironed out. There are a few shortcomings, namely reinforcement of external borders and better coordination, perhaps burden sharing of the migrants between the member states. So where do we go now? What are the next steps with regard to the Commission and the Council? Well, I couldn't have said it better. Solidarity must come into play. And therefore, if significant pressure, migratory pressure, comes through the south or through the east or wherever, then it means that it's everyone's concern and everyone must carry the responsibility, a fair sharing of responsibility, mind you, for that. Well, I couldn't have said that better myself. Some very uh, tough uh, questions there, and it's a tough issue. So thank you very much, Simon Busatil, MEP from Malta, for fielding those questions. My pleasure. That's all for now on People First. For more information about our group's activities on these and other issues, please visit our website at eppgroup.eu. I'm Gemma Slaymaker. Until next time, thank you for watching.